So I'll briefly cover what oxidative stress is because I've used it in some previous episodes. So it will help to actually define what I mean by that. I'll try to keep it simple. So basically, oxidants, sometimes they can be called free radicals. You might have seen that somewhere. They are, they do the opposite of what antioxidants do in the body. So oxidants cause damage and antioxidants protect against oxidants, right? Basically, oxidants are highly reactive, unstable atoms or molecules that can injure cell membranes, proteins, DNA, and other biochemical structures. That's why they can be detrimental, is because they cause damage to surrounding tissues, proteins, cell membranes, things like that, right? There's a certain amount of oxidants that are created in the body through our normal metabolism, right? So it's not like they're all bad. The important thing is that they're kept in balance. So we need the oxidants and the antioxidants to be in a certain homeostatic balance is what we can call it, right? So basically, oxidative stress is a process where the body's antioxidant protection is not enough to prevent damage from re radicals and other oxidation reactions. So it is when the body's antioxidant defense systems are overwhelmed that we have this problem of oxidative stress. Now, the factors that cause or contribute to oxidative stress include heavy metals and toxic chemicals, depletion of the body's antioxidants, such as glutathione, which I covered in the previous episode. So when the body's internal antioxidants are depleted, it can leave us predisposed to oxidative stress. Certain medications can contribute to oxidative stress. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, gut infections. So gut infections can deplete glutathione because they cause a lot of toxins, metabolic byproducts to be released that the body needs to neutralize. So aside from damaging important proteins and structures in the body, oxidative stress can induce inflammation and it can cause the premature death of our cells. It can cause mutations in our DNA and it can even be cancer promoting, right? So point being is we need to do as much as possible to reduce oxidative stress in our body. Now, when it comes to brain cells, they're especially vulnerable to oxidative stress because their membranes are made of polyunsaturated fatty acids that oxidize very easily. Now, because brain cells do not replicate, once they're damaged, they can become permanently dysfunctional or may even die and can never be replaced, right? So this is very relevant when it comes to autism because researchers have documented oxidative damage or markers of increased oxidative stress in autistic individuals in numerous studies, right? So for various reasons, such as increased toxic burdens, increased gut infection, things like that, it seems that autistic children are more susceptible to increased oxidative stress. Right, so as I've already mentioned, the factors and the causes that can contribute to oxidative stress include toxins in our environment, in our food, toxins that bacterial yeast infections produce, things like that. So the important takeaway here is that you need to reduce all those factors, first of all, as I keep saying, you need to reduce if you're a child you need to find out if your child has a gut infection or yeast overgrowth or bacteria or parasites or whatever causing dysbiosis in the gut. You need to reduce environmental and food related factors that can increase your child's toxic burden. So again, organic diet, super important, clean water, super important. And also, you know, your use of plastics, building materials around the house, things like that. Reducing that is super important. So, and this goes on to things like 
what washing powder you use, what fabric softener you use, all of these things can be either extremely toxic if you just buy the conventional store-bought ones or they can be a lot better made from more natural products, more you know gentle products. So I'll have a longer episode dedicated to cleaning up your child's environment because there's quite a lot of factors there to consider. You're probably doing some of those already, but when it comes to autistic children, you need to have a pristinely clean environment because as we have just seen in the last couple of episodes, autistic children tend to, as has been shown in many studies, tend to have lower levels of the antioxidant glutathione and higher oxidative stress. So this is from both sides a bad thing because you have lower antioxidant levels, which means you are less able to cope with increased oxidative burden. And then on the other hand, you have increased oxidative burden, which could be because of the low glutathione or the low antioxidants, but those antioxidants became low for a reason. So whether that is insufficient intake from the diet or increased, as I said, heavy metals, toxic chemicals, whatever medications it could be, certain gut infections, things like that, right? So that's a little primer on what oxidative stress is. It is a term I'll probably be using occasionally, so it's good to have some frame of reference of what I'm talking about. I hope that you found this episode helpful, and I hope to see you on the next one.